Hey gang, thanks for checking out this episode of The Last Frame. In this episode, I want to show you a beauty shot and a series of headshots done with three lights and a reflector, and no modifiers on the lights. The modifier was the room that I shot in. Stay tuned. Keep it simple stupid is my working motto, and that stems from the fact that I'm less interested in the gear and I'm more interested in my experience with my subject. So with that being said, I like gear just like any other photographer, but I'm not always looking to use as much of it as possible when I shoot. I only use what I absolutely need. In this series of headshots and beauty shots, I was working in my home studio, which is only 23 feet by 12 feet with a ceiling height that is just shy of eight feet tall. And the good news? is that this lighting setup works even better in a smaller space. So if you're shooting in your living room or in a spare bedroom, this will work out really well for you. I lit the shot with three Paul C. Buff Alien B B800s, which are 320 watt second strobes. All three strobes are set to just above half power. Two of the strobes are set behind my model on either side of the white wall background, and the third is just behind the camera, not aimed at the model, but aimed high in the opposite direction towards the corner of the wall and the ceiling. You can see in this 3D image that I'm using the white wall and ceiling as a huge reflector. I have my model seated near the midpoint of the room so that I'm getting a reasonable amount of fill from the wall that she's facing. I'm using a camera angle that is just below her eyes so that I can show her in a confident position. The intended purpose of this setup was a clean and pretty headshot like this. But as I describe in this video, I always make it a point to work my shot to see where it might lead. In this case, after I felt comfortable with my color headshot, I switched to black and white and had my makeup artist tussle the model's hair to give it a more casual feel. I also moved in for a tighter crop. Then I had my model begin to play with her hair and worked on a version that had a bit more of a boudoir feel to it. Then I went back to color and added in a fan and finally decided to add the red tool material that led me to this frame which required very little post-production beyond the usual contrast and sharpening and of course, removing of blemishes. Now there are a few things that I wanna point out about my process here. First of all, please notice, I'm not shooting ridiculously wide and then figuring out my composition in post. Here are the images straight out of the camera. My final shots have very little cropping to them. If you watch my live shows here on YouTube, I'm constantly pushing photographers to fill the frame and not waste all of those pixels that they paid for. I want you to see that I practice what I preach and I assure you that is the best path to fine tuning your skills and ensuring that you do consistently top notch work. Also, I wanted to point out that when I'm in the studio shooting, if I have an idea for a shot in black and white, I switch my camera over to monochrome mode and boost the contrast on the monochrome setting to plus three so that I'm seeing the previews in black and white and looking very much like black and white film. I do this simply because back in the film days, you would make very different lighting and exposure choices if you were shooting color transparency film compared to black and white film. I do my black and white conversions using Nick Silver FX Pro. Now what about speed lights? Of course, this will work with speed lights. And if you're on a budget and in a tighter space, you could get away with using two strobes one in front and one in back, and you could use different color backgrounds. The moral here, if you're photographing people, hopefully your subject is much more important than your gear. Beyond that, remember that all great photography is the process of solving a series of problems. As always, the possibilities are only limited by your own imagination. Hey, I hope that sparked some ideas for you. Take this idea and run with it. Go create and show me what you come up with. And don't forget, your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.